Right, temporary works. Uh, as usual, I've mentioned, all the slides here are not prepared by me. It was prepared by someone else and it was added by the resource person. I added a few previously, so I can see mixtures of slides that have been uh, added by, by lecturers. Temporary works, what are they? Temporary works from the, from the work itself is works which are temporary. We need these temporary works to support the permanent works, basically. Mm. Temporary works are the parts of construction project that are needed to be enabled, the permanent works to be built. Uh, it will be removed normally after used. Uh, we have basically four types of temporary works on site, but we can have a few more, a few others, yeah? Uh, four are the scaffolding, form work, false work, and shoring. Temporary works are designed uh, and they are important because they are the support of the permanent works. If you don't really, um, if you ignore the temporary works, that mean the strength, uh, the durability of the temporary works, then how are they going to be able to support the, temporary, the, the permanent works? So we need temporary works to support. These places, uh, people at risk of injuries can, co can cause the projects to be delayed. So temporary works are very important if you don't really have, uh, you know, all the safety precautions and, you know, you don't check the strength, you use all the temporary works, then it may give injuries to uh, people on site. The first one is scaffolding. You know what is scaffolding? We use scaffolding to provide level working areas as well as providing a safe platform from which to work. So basically, scaffolding is being used by the workers to do work at a higher level. So you don't, you can't use ladder because the ladder, um, probably because you need to have buckets of you know uh, materials around you, nails, paintings. Um, for painting works, uh, plastering works at a higher level. So the workers need to have a platform to do work. So they use the scaffolding. So basically we have different types of scaffolding. Previously we only uh, touched on putlock scaffold and independent scaffolds. Now uh, other types have been added. So we'll just go through a bit uh, of the cantilever truss out or in, in countries. Put lock scaffolds. Again, from the name, it means put the lock. So basically, put lock scaffold means they only have like one rod and the transom will be attached to the wall. So they akan guna wall untuk pegang scaffolding tu. That is put lock scaffold. This form of scaffolding consists of single row, macam I cakap tadi, set away from the wall at a distance and then they will join together by horizontal members called the ledges and tied to the building. So basically when they say tied to the building means it tied to the wall. So because we have a scaffolding which are tied to the, to the slab. So this one is to the wall. So that's the illustration. So you have the single rail just now, sorry, not rail. Uh, the, 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 the single scaffold and you will have the transom inserted in the wall. So how do they insert the transom? Uh, basically, you only make a hole. Buat lubang and then you masukkan. Lepas tu, of course, around the hole, dekat lubang tu, dia kena ada leveling supaya safety, terjamin and uh, lubang tu dia akan sendat balik lah dengan wedges or uh, they would do uh, adjustment at the side. And if you can see from the illustration, the first one is very important for the building to support the scaffolding. So if you have higher level of buildings, you may need maybe two transoms uh, <coughs> to go in the buildings. So it depends on how high is the building. Like this one is only one floor. You can see this is one floor. So if you have the second floor, you can have another transom there. And of course, the base will be supported uh, on the ground. The ground will take all the loads. 
and the ladder will be fixed, uh, uh, will be uh, fixed like nailed uh, using stake, like um, uh, like wood or something. So they are kind of secure the So it's it's uh, it's there, durable, support the load. Not only the load of workers, but the load of uh, materials. You are kind of bucket, so those are lo uh, loads. And sometimes you have the wind load, uh, dead load, whatever load. So they have to calculate uh, so that uh, the scaffold would able to support all these loads. So that's in uh, the, these are two examples of put lock scaffold. You can see the transom goes in. And this one as well is not clear, but you can Google more. So there you go, that's the transom. It goes in the building, so they will make a hole and it will be inserted. Okay, so that's the base and the rod will go up. Okay, independent scaffold. Independent scaffold means they are independent of themselves. They don't need the wall, they don't need the building, basically. Um, they use their own members. They have two rows, so basically the are single wall pegang. So you need they double, so they pegang each other. They are independent, which are tied by cross members called transom. So the transom akan ikat yang rod pertama dengan rod kedua. So they don't need the wall untuk masukkan transom to hold the scaffold. This form of scaffold does not rely upon the building for support, like I said, and is therefore suitable for use in conjunction with framed structures. So, a uh, scaffold should be secured to the building at interval of approximately 3.6 meter vertically and 6 meter horizontally. So, you need, still need support uh, a bit from the building because tinggi kan, takut dia terbalik. Uh, they will be connected by horizontal tubes called brittle bearing on the inside of the wall and we'll see the pictures. Um, if suitable openings are not available, then the scaffold should be strutted from the ground using wrecking tubes inclined towards the building. So we will see what is wrecking tubes or wrecking um, shoring. Wrecking means dia, dia macam sing it. So dia macam brace, dia akan support the scaffold daripada bawah. Kalau tak ada openings, macam window opening, sometimes they use window openings untuk pegang scaffold this uh, scaffold the single row and then the second one and they hold each other and they will have this um what they call it the braces okay because you need bracing and they are can couple because you need coupled together and they will tie it together so uh, they can hold the loads Right, these are the detailed drawings, you can see yourself. Okay, these are real pictures. So you have the couplers, you have the braces, you have arms, okay? It's the same thing. So can you see, they have materials, so they do work, they have buckets. Uh, and you, we know cement plasters, they are very heavy, so the scaffold should be able to support the loads. <clears throat> this is clearer picture. So you have two, one, and two, and they have transoms here, and they have bracings. So the bracings can go diagonally, or you can have... So with braces, is another topic you can have uh, cable bracing, it depends on what actually you can have rod bracing. The bracings are very important so that the scaffold won't um, turn. Macam, kalau you tak support, they may be macam goyang kaki dia. So when you put the bracing, it's more rigid. Dia, dia pegang kaki tu dekat situ. Tak adalah dia nak bergoyang, goyang, berjoget kat situ. So braces are important. If you go to classroom, we are not in the classroom, but if you look at tables at your home, you may have um, Braces underneath, uh, bracings underneath your table. So, kan kat kaki meja tu, cuba tengok ada tak um, uh, bracing. Like my table now is a dining table. Uh, so, I have 
basically columns. Kaki, kaki meja tu I panggil columns. And I have beams. Uh, so yang yang antara column dengan column ni kita panggil beam kan. So my dining table I don't have any uh, racings because the the kaki ni sangat kuat, sangat besar dan dia punya beam ni sangat besar. So um, depends on on the structure. Okay. Right. So uh, this is cantilever scaffold, another type. So cantilever means when you extend. Dia nak pergi jauh, belakang sikit. So maybe uh, uh, if you look at this picture, so they will have support from the slab. So just now kan dia pakai wall. This one dia pakai slab or openings. But basically we need the slab. Dia akan letak head, plates, sole plate. Basically sole dengan head plates they are just uh, similar. Cuma ni bila dia letak dekat kaki, dia panggil sole plates. Dia macam um, support untuk transfer load. You bayangkan kalau you letak tube dekat atas lab, nanti dia macam berlubang tak kuat kan? So you need tapak kaki. Sama juga tapak tangan dekat atas, tapak kaki dekat bawah. So you imagine like you holding uh, the slabs and orang ikat uh, pinggang you dengan this thing. So uh, cantilever when they extend like this and they need support from the building of course. And they have independent scaffold at the uh, at the end, but it's cantilever. Cantilever means it's extended. This is an example. So they have the support and they cantilevered it, and you have uh up to extended extended up to extended scaffold. Similar things, it goes from the ground, it support the load, it needs uh, apa tu, support from the slab. So, they have the opening besar kat sini, so they have, kat sini tak nampak sangat lah, it's not clear. And then they mixed uh, different types of scaffolding here. They have cantilever, probably they have trust. Um, okay, depends on the project. <coughs> trust out scaffold. Basically, it's the same, but this one is uh, macam tadi, this one, this one, I cakap, I nampak trust dekat sini, dekat sini, eh, dia punya trust. Uh, tapi bawah dia, I tak nampak pula, dia diagonal, but it's straight, tapi dia uh, suspended. Mungkin trust dia macam ni kot. So, yang ini pula, the same thing, they use the slab to support the scaffold, but the thing here is, Dekat bawah ni, dia jadikan macam trusses, dia trust out, dia pegang kat bawah tu. So, tak, tak semestinya dia dia support load tu daripada um, ground. So, this one can be like, um, how do I say, like flying, flying structure. This one doesn't need the ground to support. Okay, so dia pakai building tu balik untuk transfer load daripada sini. Lepas tu dia pakai brace, so brace ni sangat kuat, dia panggil rackers. So, uh, nampak macam sama kan dia bracing but yang ini dia panggil racker sebab dia support load untuk transfer semua ke sini. Okay, so yang ini dia akan pegang lah, dia akan pegang, dia akan pegang setiap floor. So, dia kuat <coughs> dekat situ. So, yang ini paling penting ni, part paling bawah. So, this is truss out scaffold. Right, you can see clear in the picture, we have this truss and it's pinned. This part is pinned in the building. So they could work at, uh, at a higher level. Gantries, these are forms of scaffolding used primarily as elevated hole loading and unloading platforms over a public footpath where the structure under construction or repair is immediately adjacent to the footpath. So basically they use this gantry scaffold uh, when they do work um, at a very, how do I say, can, can I say congested area because they can't actually block the way because people are using that uh, baby corridor to walk. Uh, when I was yeah, when I was cooling dekat KL, dekat bahagian globe tu, diorang tengah buat renovation. So, they can't actually uh, close the sections because that's where people 
um, uh, waited for the bus and it, it was a pu public area. So what they have to do is uh, scaffolding tu kena kuat, dia punya ada kena column, memang kaki dia kena kuat. So you can actually walk underneath. Even when I went to Europe, I can't remember, was it? Um, I think it was Berlin. No, sorry. It was... I can't remember what. Yang jual coklat banyak tu apa? Yang pengeluar coklat tu, negara yang kecil tu, Belgium. So, yeah, I went to Belgium and they had uh, this very long uh, scaffolding yang we can actually walk underneath. So the gantry platform can also serve as a storage, as accommodation area, providing the staging from which a conventional independent scaffold to provide access to the face of the building. So basically, gantries, they use the concept of independent. Remember, tadi kita ada dua, we have the put lock and we have independent. Independent yang ada dua, dia pegang each other tu. So gantries, they use the independent uh, system. Gantry scaffold can be constructed from standard structural steel components or from a system scaffold boleh daripada besi, daripada besi pun dia ada different types, metal, uh, tubes normally scaffold kita nampak macam tubes kan tapi ada juga yang dipakai besi because uh, maybe uh, that part uh, mungkin untuk public so dia kena secure betul-betul dan projek tu lama so kalau sekejap mungkin dia provide uh, yang Biasalah, tapi kalau lama, maybe they provide better one. So, basically, dia ada column macam ni. Dia ada beam, lebih kurang macam tu lah. Lepas tu dia akan construct. So, benda ni semua kena kuat. Especially, you have learned the columns and beams, they support load, they have to be strong. So, this part here, um, a clear working space where people can actually just... Um, sorry, people walk here, so they have boards on people because it says here public walkway, so people walk on the boards, a safe walking area, they have to provide a safe walking area. So this is the working space. We'll see pictures. So there you go. Kita ada, mana ni? So that's the platform. Kalau you tengok, it's a combination of scaffolding. So they have, kalau you nampak ni single kan? This single, this is not independent. Oh, is it independent? Oh yeah, this is independent. Then they have trust, they masukkan, and they have extended, tadi apa, cantilever. So it's a mixture of um, different types of scaffolding here. Tapi kat bawah ni orang boleh jalan. So dia punya kaki tu, double lah dia pakai, double tapi still dia punya transom, dekat masuk dekat dalam ni, it's extended. So people can actually walk here. Can you see that? One uh, orang jalan ni, kat sini. Dia panjang dia. Okay, so kat atas ni buat kerja. Ah, ini masa I pergi dekat bangunan O2 London, they were doing something like this. Nampak macam tu je. Hmm, yeah, so people can walk here. Tak nampak kan dia punya scaffold. Uh, of course, ni false work scaffold. <coughs> this one is... Uh, this is where people can walk. Masuk dalam ni macam terowong. So, ini independent scaffold kat luar ni. So, they do, they can do work. Ada platform kat sini. And atas ni adalah gantri. So, dia dan independent scaffold ni jadi macam dia punya column. Okay, so ni column dia, ini lebih kurang macam beam lah. Dia punya platform. Ha, ini lebih uh, proper. So dia ada columns and beams like bangunan, macam bangunan betul dah jadinya. So, depends on the project again. So ini adalah dia punya fittings for scaffold. The next one is form work, the second type of temporary works. Form work. Form work for in situ concrete may be described as mold or box into which wet concrete can be poured and compacted so that it will flow and finally set to the inner profile of the box or mold. So if you have a square box, then you will have a square uh, structure. So if you have like um, a long 
triangle do we have triangular long um apa tu uh, do we have round yeah we we have round up untuk round column we have round form work tapi normally yang round ni they do it untuk pikas ataupun yang cover untuk um, I, I do not know whether you have learned this in previous semester sometimes column tu empat segi tapi dia beli sarung dekat hardware ada jual dia macam sarung je you sarung nampak column tu bulat so that is easier um, to construct sebab formwork kalau you nak buat bulat uh, dia banyak kerja sebab kita guna benda yang macam timber or metal so metal pun sekarang sebenarnya boleh buat bulat but sometimes uh, kena buat betul-betul dan yang paling senang adalah empat segi so there are two types of formwork uh, ada timber formwork and industrialized formwork system industrialized formwork system termasuklah formwork yang daripada besi uh, and uh, different types kita ada they also use formwork yang jadi permanent terus dia ada dua, dual, dual punya function uh, there was a system uh, used by Putrajaya Holdings by UA, UAC something, the, the name of the company, I can't remember UAC kot rasanya um, so they have like sandwich wall you dah belajar sebab wall kan, sandwich wall maknanya dia ada you bayangkan dia gypsum board, gypsum board tu macam plywood lah lebih kurang okay on the left and you have another gypsum board on the right they have the the board so sandwich means kat tengah-tengah wall tu kosong so Mak Saleh selalunya guna sandwich uh, wall sebab dia nak letak insulation dekat ada dia sejuk so kita banyak pakai batu-bata so dia orang banyak pakai dry wall system iaitu the, the sandwich macam saya cakap tadi tu so uh, dia orang buat macam mana dia orang letak benda tu dah jadi macam formwork dan kemudian dia ada lubang dekat um, panel gypsum board tu ataupun you imagine plywood lah kalau you tak tahu apa tu gypsum board gypsum board tu macam warna benda warna, macam panel-panel macam plywood warna putih tapi dia buat pada gypsum so dia ada lubang dan kemudian mereka tuang konkrit dalam lubang tu selalunya konkrit itu adalah konkrit yang lightweight konkrit yang macam foam tu so dia masukkan konkrit foam dalam tu kemudian dia, dia vibrate vibrate lepas tu dia seal balik lubang tu dan kemudian apabila siap siap je lah dia biarkan gypsum board tu kat situ kan kemudian dia skim je so sementara dia nak tunggu benda tu kering dia just skim je outside okay yang tu lebih cepat lah that is industrialized formwork system in most cases a mold will have to be constructed on site so uh, in Malaysia um, most of our projects we still use timber formwork but uh, for big projects like high-rise buildings they use steel formwork atau kita panggil flying formwork industrialized formwork sebab dia boleh reuse banyak kali dan dia senang nak buka dia senang nak handle tapi kalau tak tahu handle dia boleh jadi leaking air keluar you can have honeycombs and many types of other concrete defects yang you dah belajar semester-semester lepas I think in material subject Foam work sites and sulfate can be either a single thick and strong materials or thinner materials tainted with struts um, The second method is, which is second method? Uh, so I'm not sure. So you need to tahu kan macam mana you've done you've actually constructed foam work by yourself in the workshop so you know that foam work for beam they have two sides and they have the soft the soffit of beam you need to have this kalau column you nak kira untuk BQ ke apa column punya formwork kena semua empat segi sebab dia vertical this is not vertical this is horizontal so dia macam mangkuk macam mangkuk lah lebih kurang okay so you tak payah pun you tuang sup tu uh, dia maintain kat situ you tak payah tutup atas macam ni tapi kalau column 
you kena for all four sides sebab dia pergi vertical. For what size limit limits width and shape of weight wet concrete of course uh, dia ikutlah kalau size column tu 250 250 then you have to measure the column or the beam uh, kena buat setting dulu you punya ground kena betul uh, you have to do leveling otherwise you cannot just simply uh, apa tu uh, pasang foam work tanpa you suka Tak boleh, semua kena suka. Resist the hydrostatic pressures of the wet concrete. Hydrostatic pressure means uh, air, concrete tu berat. So dia kena able, bila you tuang tu dia tak ada kembang. Sebab saya pernah tengok they, they put concrete and the foam work pecah. Foam work tu boleh pecah sebab dia tak boleh resist the pressure. Bila tuang concrete kan banyak pressure dia macam lepas sekali, habis semua. So, uh, foam work penting dekat side. Uh, foam work base ataupun soffit, limit depth, resist dead load of wet concrete and later dry set concrete for several days until concrete has gained sufficient strength. So, side sangat penting dan bawah tu pun penting. Okay, tapi yang paling penting adalah side supaya dia tak kembang dan pecah. So, that's why we need stretch sometimes if the materials is uh, betul nipis. Okay, this one you have learned before in the workshop. Uh, BIM's foam work is the same, like I said, it's three-sided box, sides, and you have the soffit. All joints in the foam work are constructed to prevent the escape of grout, which could result in honeycomb being, like I've mentioned just now. The removal time for the foam work will vary, will vary with air temperature, humidity, and consequence, consequent curing rate, but we basically have the um, apa tu apa kita cakap uh, standard days kan normally concrete 14 hari ada yang 21 hari untuk 28 days uh, tapi tak adalah dia tunggu sampai 28 hari baru nak cabut from work so normally bila dia dah ada shape dia dah keras tu sebelum uh, dia matang they can actually uh, uh, dismantle the from work depends lah macam dia cakap tadi varies with air temperature it depends on uh, the concrete punya pengerasan tu. Uh, okay, these are all foam works kat sini. Dia punya beam. So, they need support sometimes. Depends on what type of <coughs> work. Macam ni dia support daripada tepi lah. So, bila you tuang konkret, dia tak adalah kembang. Dia tak adalah pecah macam saya tengok tu. So maybe yang itu tak cukup support dan tak tak kuatlah di punya sides. Okay, these are the details, uh, illustrations. Beams foam works, you need props positioned and level. Sebab you tak nak beam tu sengit. Beam selalunya dekat atas kan, roof beam and then you have brown beam. You nak bangunan you sama je, sebelah kiri 10 kaki, sebelah kanan pun 10 kaki. Jangan pula tiba-tiba beam you kat sini dah rendah, beam you kat sana tinggi pula. So you need leveling work to be done. Soffit placed and again leveled. Sides of foam work placed and then plumbed supaya dia straight. I've seen pictures from students uh, practical training. Dia punya beam tu kembang. Instead of uh, apa tu, apa bentuk yang kita panggil tu. Uh, Instead of bukan empat segi, empat segi tepat tu Dia jadi kembang di atas Dan itu adalah beam, dia kembang di atas sebab foam work dia tak betul-betul support, dia tak straight Okay, dia kembang dan beam dia bukan empat segi tepat, dia dah jadi macam trapezium sebab dia kembang both sides Dan beam tu adalah untuk bangunan high rise So, design dia dah berubah so, bila design dia dah berubah, dia akan berubah dia punya load transfer in everything. Sebab saya ada tanya engineer after that, engineer is like, um, tak apalah kalau tak banyak. Kalau banyak, then it will be a problem. But still, you nak ke beli bangunan yang masuk je bangunan tengok sengit-sengit bangunan tu? Adalah, I pergi mana? I went to, mana ni? Uh, Barcelona. They have this building, nampak macam cair dia depan luar. 
can't remember lah, banyak lupa lah. So, uh, yang itu lain lah, that is architectural works but we ourselves do not want to live in a house yang bila kita masuk banyak defects, tengok pula beam dia sebenarnya sengit tapi bila dia plaster nampakkan straight. It happens uh, few, I've seen few times. Then position checked, lepas dah semua semua okay, strutting baru dituang concrete. Striking times, 9 to 12 hours as soon as possible, uh, props left under. So this is, it depends lah bila masa you nak uh, buka dia. Columns form work, it's the same thing tapi macam saya cakap tadi, it's like a box. So you need all four sides dan you betul-betul kena, uh, you don't use thread tapi you pakai external members. You see if they have this, this one. Okay, so they have cleats yang akan pegang for all four sides. Column pun sama juga, penting. So ini adalah uh, incoming beam foam work, dia nak support uh, apa tu? foam work untuk column. Uh, this is fine foam works, ni pakai steel. Is that right? Gambar tu tak berapa clear ya? Okay, kalau tak tak ada kali. So, yang this is steel uh, and on your right is timber foam work. Ada banyak struts kat sini. Dia support, 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 support lagi, support lagi kat luar ni support lagi uh, supaya nanti bila dia tuang konkrit dia tak kembang. So, tengok yang dah siap ni cantik dia straight je because they are all leveled and uh, plumbed. So you need support. These are the props. Ni kita panggil props. Huh? And uh, this is steel foam work. I nampak macam steel foam work ni. Timber foam work? Timber kot. Uh, ni steel foam work. This is clear. Okay, so we can't see the foam work here, but basically this is the uh, column stam yang dah keluar then you have the starter bar nampak tak? 1 starter bar, 2 starter bar, 3 starter bar and 4. So bila ada 4 starter bar dia akan ada lagi sat bar untuk naik column tu dia kena bersambung dia kena overlap baru you punya uh, this is not under this subject you belajar masa part 1 so connection dia macam tu lah dia bend sikit kat sini supaya dia boleh ikat kat sini Kalau you tak bend macam ni nak ikat, so connection dekat sini sangat penting. Then baru you letakkan foam work, lepas tu barulah kita cast concrete. So bila kita cast concrete dekat sini, kita masukkan concrete then they are doing vibrations, dia masukkan buka vibrations, uh, I rasa yang itu. Okay, lepas tu dia levelkan yang atas ni, buang yang lebih-lebih ni. Uh, samakan balik, then they will leave the starter bar, nampak tak starter bar? They will leave the starter bar here uh, for the next level. Can you guys see where's the foam work? That's fine. You can just see the slides later. Okay, this one has got no foam work. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, a machine to, how do I say, to cast the curb, normally for the curb, okay. Mm, curb, um, nampak macam it's a bit higher, tapi dia panggil power curb. It's, um, it's a curb yang tinggi. Or maybe like a parapet. Kalau bangunan dah hairas, kita panggil parapet wall lah. So we have these sort of machines, we have technologies where they actually uh, mix the concrete here, nampak tak kat sini and then it will go here. So they have the shaper dekat sini dan kemudian dia akan tarik dan dia ada macam getah kat hujung ni untuk dia bagi smooth. 
dan dia ada vibrator teruslah kat dalam ni dan dia vibrate sekali semua masuk dah. Um, sekarang ni pakai teknologi to make road curbs or what, they use the machines. Easier, they don't need the homework ataupun uh, macam kita previously kalau curbs kita pakai yang dah precast yang dah siap sambung-sambung-sambung but now pakai mesin je lah terus jalan. Uh, still from work. Right, the third one is shoring. Shoring ni tak pernah dengar kan before this. Shoring adalah temporary support which can be given to existing buildings with the primary functions to avoid collapse of the structure. So normally, we use shoring for renovation works or refurbishment works. Uh, we want to add, um, how do I say? We want to change the face of the building. Dulu di batu-bata but sekarang kita nak buat sebab kita dah, jad, kita dah refurbish, kita dah tukarkan daripada sebiji rumah, dia jadi kedai. Um, in KL, we have, even in Ipoh, I think we have lots of refurbishment works. In KL, uh, because I'm from Bangsa, so if you uh, drive dekat Jalan Bangsa, no, Jalan Bangsa, sorry, dekat Jalan Travers, uh, sorry, no, Jalan Makruf. Lorong Makruf, Jalan Makruf, the, the one dekat McDonald tu, that is Jalan Makruf. Okay, dekat dekat sana you tengok dekat depan Masjid Saidina tu all the way dulu tu semua rumah. But now kalau you tengok on your right, on your, on your left, rumah dah jadi showroom kereta, dah jadi kedai wedding, tak tahu kedai wedding tu lagi tak depan McDonald. Then you go straight, you can see kedai lampu, kedai macam-macam kedai lah. Okay, so Bila you ada kedai, of course you want people to see your kedai. You will need to change the face of the building. So you need to change quite a few things. Uh, so masa itulah kita pakai shoring. Banyak kita pakai during <coughs> apa tu refurbishment work. Tapi kita pakai juga untuk projek lain. I'm just giving an example. Shoring can be used when walls botch out, when walls crack, unequal settlements or foundations and repairs are to be carried out to the crack wall when an addition structures need to be pulling down when openings are to be uh, newly made or enlarged in the wall. So what it says here that we use shoring to support the wall. Katakan wall to crack. So kita tak nak dia jatuh, kita tak nak dia further crack ataupun kita tak nak dia damage. Kita nak repair ni. So kita support dulu wall tu, kita tahan dulu, bertahanlah di sini dan kemudian kita akan betulkan dia punya bawah. Kita akan betulkan foundations, uh, kita betulkan apa yang tak betul. We have to see what causes the settlement. Uh, kalau foundation then uh, mungkin sebab bangunan tu macam saya cakap tadi, refurbishment sebenarnya rumah tapi tiba-tiba dia buat car showroom. Bila dia buat car showroom then obviously we will have more loads isn't it? So when we have more loads we need to add more foundations but they we do not want to demolish the whole building. It's just that we want to add uh, apa tu, uh, more loads and we need to construct uh, bigger foundations. Uh, maybe kita buat piling ke apa ke bawah. So itu yang bila you tambah foundation, you nak kuatkan, maybe ada settlement, maybe ground, ada uh, ground movement. Itu semua belajar next semester, okay? Then, uh, Bawah tu yang kita panggil underpinning. So underpinning, uh, I'll cover in the next chapter. I'm not sure if I can cover today. It depends. Kalau I ada masa, nanti I, I just sambung je. But we have one more hour. Tengoklah kejap lagi sempat tak. So uh, we use shoring untuk support. Sama ada ceiling dia atau slab dia atau wall dia. We want to support the building supaya dia bertahan dekat situ sementara kita repair. Okay, kita bagi dia support. Macam orang kata kalau orang nak pengsan, kita pegang orang tu. Kan? Bukan pengsan. Kau pengsan lah dulu nanti aku repair lah kau, aku pergi hantar hospital. No. Kita kalau orang tu agak kan nak pengsan, you kena peluk orang tu, kena bagi dia jangan jatuh. Sebab bila you jatuh tu lah yang kebanyakan orang kena stroke. So I never knew before bila nurse tu bagi tahu dengan I, baru I tahu kenapa you tak boleh bagi orang jatuh kalau dia pengsan. Because jatuh macam-macam benda boleh rosak dalam badan. Right. So uh, there are three types of shoring systems usually used. We have this, these are the basics one, yeah? So we have wrecking shores, we have flying shores, we have dead shores, or we can have mixtures of all the shores. 
Okay, this is wrecking shows. Wrecking yang macam saya cakap tadi, wrecking, dia diagnose, dia 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 sengit. Dia macam bracing but it's a wrecker, dia support. Sampai ground. Okay, the shoring arrangement transfer the floor and wall loads to the ground by means of sloping struts or wreckers. So, nanti kejap lagi I akan explain macam mana dia pasang. Uh, so, they have the wall, they want to support the wall. So, dia pakai tanah untuk transfer load yang berat tu ke dalam tanah kat sini. Of course tanah tu kena tanah yang kuat lah. You need a stable soil unless you need to find something else. Um, soil tu tak boleh lah soil tu dah berair ke apa dalam lumpur ke. Uh, it has to be stable then you can support the load. Uh, macam mana eh you bayangkan wall tu nak jatuh you sendiri support. Okay, you, bayangkan ini you, yang reka ni. You pegang ni, ni tapak tangan you yang sebesar-besar ni. So, they need tapak tangan yang besar untuk pegang wall tu. <coughs> okay. Then you pun pegang wall tu, then you akan guna kekuatan kaki supaya dia tetap di situ. Okay, kalau boleh imagine, boleh lah. Wrecking shoring are placed at 3 to 4.5 meter center to center and can be single, double, triple, or multiple wreckers format. So, I akan tunjuk apa benda tu. Suitable materials are timber, structural steel and frame to build a scaffolding. Boleh pakai timber, boleh pakai um, um, macam scaffold punya tubings pun boleh juga. So, wrecking shores is very important that the wreckers are positioned correctly so that they are capable to receive maximum wall and floor loads. The center line of the wrecker should intersect with the center line of the wall or floor bearing. So, Ini adalah center line, dia kena sama, kena support. Center line of the floor bearing. Okay, yang bawah sekali kita panggil satu, nombor dua, nombor tiga, first, second, third. Yang atas sekali <coughs> kita panggil rider. Dia, dia, uh, dia melekat dengan yang nombor tiga ni. Okay. Selalunya, for wrecking shores, we cannot go higher than four levels, I think. It's about four levels. One wrecker for each floor is required. Ideally, should be at an angle of between 40 and 70. So, setiap floor ni, kena ada satu wrecker. Satu floor, satu wrecker. Satu floor, satu wrecker. Okay. Yang ini ada nama lain ni, ah, rider. So, therefore, the number of records which can be used is generally generally limited to three. So, satu, dua, tiga, empat lah. Lebih kurang tiga, empat. Tiga records, satu rider. Okay, kita, kita, kita nampak empat lah. Kita bilang empat tapi dia bilang, dia bagi nama lama, dia bagi nama lain sebab ini dah jarak-jarak-jarak kakinya. Yang ini dah melekat. So, dia panggil rider. Dia ride je yang nombor tiga ni. Tapi dia akan support nombor empat. So, yang nombor tiga ni kena kuat jugalah. Also, rebuilding can be short by this method if extra members called a rider is added. So, extra member, kita panggil dia rider. So, ini adalah contoh bangunan lama. Saya tak tahu dekat mana but nampak macam dekat Europe lah. Okay, yang ini dia pakai tengok dia punya reka sangat besar. Dia dah sendal dekat sini. Okay, lepas tu second dan dia pakai supporting rider kat sini. Okay. Hmm. Sama juga breaking tapi cara dia susul lain. Ni dia pakai bracing lah supaya dia tak patah reka dia. Of course semua reka ada bracing. Ah ni bracing. Braces eh. Supaya dia tak patah dan dia boleh support kaki dia macam saya cakap tadi ada bracing supaya dia tak goyang-goyang berjuk-juk kat situ. <coughs> So, boleh pakai steel ataupun pakai kayu. <coughs> okay, sequence for erecting wrecking shores. Uh, carry out site investigation. Kita tengok berapa banyak nak pakai. Dia punya bearing capacity, the location. Mark out and cut mortises and housing. Kenapa tak nampak ni? Oops, sorry. Uh, mark out and cut mortises, I think, and housing in wall plate. So, this is a wall plate. So, bila you letak wall plate, you kena tebuk wall plate tu. Supaya you nak masukkan nanti you punya needle lah apalah. Okay, sekejap. I want to try. 
Kalau saya terlambat. Uh, so they cut the mortises and housings. Ni dia punya mortises. Set out and cut holes for needles in external wall. So bila dia dah cut kat situ, dia akan mark. So bila dia mark, dia akan tebuk pula wall. Sebab uh, walaupun wall tu sakit tapi kita still perlukan wall tu untuk memegang uh, tangan kita lah maknanya kalau tangan kita melekat lah kan macam cicak. Tapi ini macam mana nak melekat? So we need the wall untuk stickkan dia. Kita tak boleh dah pakai glue kan sebab dia tinggi nak pakai glue banyak. So kita attach dia macam tu lah. Kita sendal dia macam tu lah lebih kurang. <coughs> mana tadi? Excavate to affirm bearing subsoil and lay brillage platform and sole plate. So dia akan selepas dia letak yang wall plate ni dekat sini yang dah ada lubang ni nampak tak? Lubang sampai kat dalam dinding ni. Nampak I, my mouse is pointing at the hole in the wall. Kat dalam tu eh. Okay, ikut, ikut apa? Ikut lubang yang you buat dekat wall plate tadi. Kemudian kita uh, korek tanah dan tanah tu kita korek pun selalunya sengit. Macam kaki you lah kalau you nak support mesti you sengit lebih kuat. Kadang-kadang kalau kita nak tahan something sampai kita tenggelamkan kaki kita. Kalau ada pasi kita tenggelamkan kat pasi tu untuk kita support. Tak tahu lah you all pernah buat benda ni ke tak tapi dulu kalau main kalau kita main something nak dengan adik-beradik saya kan nak tolak pintu jangan bagi dia buka. Macam tu lah buat je kan. Tolak. <coughs> so uh, then basically kenapa kita buat dia sengit macam ni supaya dia boleh straight dekat sini dan dia boleh support dia boleh support load tu ok lepas tu uh, cut and erect records commencing from the bottom shore so dia akan masukkan kat sini ok dia akan letak shoring ni dekat atas dekat atas plate ni lah of course lepas je ni dia akan letak plate dulu kat bawah ni sole plate, sole plate tu dekat bawah lah maknanya tapak kaki sole eh di bawah tu. Lepas tu dia akan uh, actually saya rasa dia masukkan ni dulu needle. Baru dia masukkan ni bawah tapi dia dekat dalam sini dia kata cut and erect records commencing from the bottom shore. Macam ini you kena cut records tu eh. You kena cut supaya dia sama. Dia tak boleh kalau same macam ni dia tak masukkan. So dia kena macam mana saya nak cakap dia kena ada shape kat sini macam tiga segi supaya dia menapak dekat dia punya plate. Fix cleats, distance blocks and binding and if it is necessary cross bracing over the backs of the shores. So apa yang dia buat dekat sini dia masukkan ni dulu kemudian dia akan masuk ni dia akan masuk needle macam jarum ni dia akan masuk yang you buat lubang tadi tu dia akan masukkan needle dan kemudian dia akan pendal uh, dekat ni ni yang saya pointing ni is cleat. So dia akan letak cleat dekat atas needle supaya benda ni rackers ni dia tak akan tergelincir ke atas. Dia perlukan needle untuk support daripada dia tergelincir ke atas dan yang kecil ni nampak kecil je cleat ni tapi fungsi dia adalah untuk menahan needle ni daripada patah ke daripada slide again kan. Dia akan maknanya walaupun nampak jointing dia kat sini macam remeh je tapi kat sini kena uh, dia punya fungsi tu maknanya kecil-kecil uh, cili padi lah orang cakap kan. Uh, dia, dia support the whole system. Okay. The same thing juga dan kemudian dia akan masukkan sini dia akan sendal di bawah needle. Selalunya needle kita masuk dululah ya. Masukkan lepas tu di sendal bawah needle kemudian dia akan letak cleat. Lepas tu the same thing the third one and then the rider pun sama tapi the rider dia tak jarakkan daripada kaki dia cuma ride atas third racker. Dan di kemudian dia akan letak bracing kalau you perasan bawah sekali bracing dia ada tiga. One, two, three. Sebab bawah tu kena kuat. Kaki kena kuat. Lepas tu dia dua, dua. Allah. Kemudian ada yang satu je pun if necessary. Dan antara kaki ni, antara macam jari-jari ni dia akan sumbat dengan uh, cleat juga, dia panggil apa? Distance piece. Okay. Dia akan uh, letak distance piece supaya 
kaki tu kekal berada di situ dia tak slide-slide ke sana ke sini so dia maintain kat situ dan sama juga dekat sini pun Okay, so uh, ini drawings dia, ini dia punya detail drawings, dua plates, uh, dia punya records, then you have the needle, needle pun kena adjust dan kemudian masukkan clip. Okay, the second one is flying shores. This shores will feel the same function, sama je, macam wrecking shores is function but I have the advantage of providing a clear working space under the shoring. So, yang ini selalunya we need two walls kalau you nampak. Dan ini adalah single flying shore. Dia boleh jadi double kalau dia punya distance ni adalah lebih um, if you have um, uh, apa tu? Macam ni lebih apa? Lebih besar. Dia punya distance tu lebih jauh. Uh, so, you have uh, we, we have to do the depth double. Nanti kita pergi kat situ. Uh, this shows full face the same function. They can be used between any parallel wall surfaces providing the span is not excess 12 meters. So, dia punya expand ni, dia punya distance should not be more than 12 meters. Really? Okay. So, flying shores ni selalunya kita guna bila racking shores kita tak boleh sampai. Racking shores tadi sampai 4 tingkat je kan? So katakan bangunan tu 6 tingkat, we can use flying shores dekat sebelah atas ataupun sometimes you nak orang berjalan kat bawah tu so kita guna flying shores. So orang boleh jalan kat bawah tu. Flying shores are placed at 3 to 4.5 meter center to center and can be single or double format. Unsymmetrical arrangement are possible providing basic principles for flying shores. Okay, so yang ini it's a combination. Kalau you nampak, dia fly, lepas tu dia rack. Okay, they have racking. Short spans up to 9 meter usually have a single horizontal. Ah, uh, That's why I cakap kalau single is about 9 meter. Dia punya distance, tapi kalau you have more uh, span, like longer span, you kena pakai double. Uh, staggered, the site operation for the setting out and erection of flying systems are similar to those uh, enumerated for wrecking shores. So basically, you can leveling, you can betulkan, of course, they can straight, you can calculation, berapa banyak load they nak support, semua boleh. Kena kena kira lah sama macam wrecking shore tadi. Hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can see here. Ni nampak tak? Ni dia punya racking, flying, flying. So, they fly kat sini. And they fly kat sini. So, they are supporting the wall daripada two walls. Ni nampak bangunan dia punya buruk dah. Oh, maybe dia pecahkan unit tengah-tengah ni. Nampak macam dia pecahkan eh. Maybe dia pecahkan unit tengah-tengah ni kot. Nampak ni macam dia pecah-pecah ni. So, I don't know. They support apa? Only they know. <coughs> Ini pun sama. This is flying. Yeah, so orang boleh jalan kat bawah ni. Support. Supporting the buildings. <coughs> single flying shores. You have single. Tadi needle dia kecil kan? Ini dia ada needle kat sini. Needle dia ni pun kecil. Tapi yang ini needle dia dekat bawah. Tadi kalau you tengok racking shores, needle dia dekat atas supaya dia nak support rackers tu daripada tenaik ke atas, betul? Yang ini needle dia sama juga, dia ada wall plate, dia sama juga, dia lubangkan and then masukkan needle tapi needle dengan clips dia di bawah. Kalau racking shores tadi di atas supaya dia tak slide ke atas. Yang ini supaya dia tak jatuh ke bawah. So dia kena ada needle and clips kat sini, cara dia sama juga. Dan kemudian dia akan letak um, dia punya, okay, I think we have this. Okay, this is double flying short. 
<coughs> same thing you ada uh, you ada uh, flying shores kat sini lepas tu you ada needle and pleats kecuali kalau you tengok kalau dia support macam ni dia ke bawah lah needle and dia punya pleats tapi bila dia dah macam racking dekat atas needle and pleats dia ke, needle and pleats kena dekat atas sebab supaya dia tak naik ke atas yang ni supaya dia tak tergelincir ke bawah So this is um, flying shores. Nama lain dia horizontal. Shorter support members, more stable, stronger support, provide clear unobstructed working space, especially dekat blah blah blah. Less intrusions on the surrounding area. Suitable for congested area. Limited space. Oh, I'm so surprised that they don't have the, they have taken out the construction method. So basically the construction method is about the same. Uh, dia dah letak, dia dah letak uh, needle and cleats. Lepas tu dia akan letak uh, kayu ni, kayu the main member. Kemudian dia akan letak, uh, apa tu? Dia akan letak, dia dia macam bracing kat sini, dia macam penyendal, dia macam rackers jugalah dia akan letak, so dia panggil strut so konsep dia sama juga macam rackers, dia masuk dekat, dekat bawah tu dia sendalkan uh, dekat sini pun sama juga dia sendalkan dan kemudian bila dia dah letak ni, dekat tengah-tengah ni dia akan letak seal seal tu supaya yang ini dia tak ada support kan, dia tak boleh letak needle dengan cleats kat sini supaya dia tak tergelincir, so you letak lah satu ni lah supaya ini tak ke sana, ini tak ke sana. So dia letakkan seal, lepas tu dia akan paku kan. Kat bawah pun same concept. Okay, so untuk yang double pun sama juga dia punya uh, construction method. The vertical or dead shores? Kenapa dia panggil dead shores? Sebab dia nikam. <laughs> Lebih kurang macam tu lah, I think. Because of the dead loads basically. Tapi uh, I selalu nak um, for students like previously, <coughs> I said sometimes they got confused between flying and dead shores so dead shores maknanya daripada atas so, macam kena tikam daripada atas so dia tebuk lantai tadi tu dia tebuk wall je but this one uh, dia kena tebuk lantai use to support dead loads which acts vertically downwards so it consists of a vertical prop or short leg with a head plate sole plate and some means of adjustment for tightening and easing the shore. The two shore legs connected over their heads by a horizontal beam or needle. So, dekat sini, uh, dia akan letak um, kaki dulu. Selalunya yang ini adalah external, yang ini adalah internal dan yang ini dia support dinding dan juga ceiling sekali dan kemudian yang ini dia ada needle, tadi needle you all kecil-kecil je kan ha, ni needle dia besar, dia melalui terus wall dan dia akan supported dia akan di uh, pakukan atau secured, dia akan letak extra plate kalau benda tu besar dan bawah ni dia ada uh, lapik the loads are transferred by the needle to the shore legs and hands down to solid bearing surface. So yang ni tak payah korek-korek dia terus letak dekat atas tu. So uh, it may be necessary to remove paving and cut holes in suspended timber floors to reach a suitable bearing surface. So yang ini kalau you tengok the needle dia akan terus pergi sini dan dia akan supported dekat luar. Ini bangunan dekat luar. So sometimes you have basement kan dekat bawah sini. <coughs> and uh, kat sini kalau you ada column yang besar, you ada structure yang tak perlukan bracing dan tak payah. Tapi yang ini dia kata brace brace if required. Bracing if required. Sama juga yang ini dia terus tebuk lantai sampai ke lantai tingkat bawah. Dan semua ceiling akan di support. Dia atas bawah dia pegang ceiling, dia pegang dinding, dia pegang basically the wall so dia perlukan support bangunan ni untuk normally kita pakai benda ni bila kita nak buat underpinning selalu ni lah if a basement is accounted as third horizontal member called a transom will be installed 
So ini dia punya gambar yang dekat. Sequence of operation uh, sama juga site investigation, numbers, bearing capacity and location, fixed ceiling struts between suitable head and sole plates to relieve the wall and floor loads. So kita nak support loads yang kat sini dulu. So kita Tahan dulu kat tangan kat atas, kaki kat bawah. Sama je konsep macam uh, scaffold tadi. Strike all windows openings within the vicinity of shores to prevent movement or distortions of the opening. So nampak tak kat sini? Nampak ke tak? Hmm. Okay so basically semua windows and doors dia akan letak macam kayu ataupun bracing. Dia akan uh, strike. Cut holes to the wall slightly larger in size than the needles. Uh, lepas tu dia akan lepas you cut holes dekat wall tu mana dia? Lepas tu cut holes through ceiling and floor for the shore legs. Of course lah bila you tebuk lantai ni you kena tebuk lah sekali dinding uh, dia punya ceiling. Position and level slippers on a firm base removing paving if necessary. Erect wages, erect wage and secure shoring arrangement. So wages are used untuk ketatkan members. Kat sini adalah mana-mana yang perlukan ketatkan tu you masuk je wages ketuk-ketuk lah selalunya. Hmm. Uh, the picture is not that clear but this is dead shores. You can see that uh, needle, two needles daripada dinding and supported by the legs. Same thing. So basically dia tahan bangunan tu daripada luar dan dalam, both. So they use plate for the needles. Dia potong eh, dia potong line untuk masukkan banyak needles kat situ. Dia potong dinding tu. Right, so this is the what? The fourth one, I think? The false work. Okay. So I've got practical students who uh, previously, bukan previous, this semester and also last semester, tak, tak, but this semester, I've got students saying, oh, you know, they put scaffolding dekat bawah slab tu untuk support. And I was like, you belajar ke tak belajar apa beza scaffolding dengan false work? False work dia rupa dia macam scaffolding tapi guys you have to understand they may look the same but false work used to support the structure. Scaffolding, scaffoldings are used to support the workers as a working platform so that they can do work at a higher level. False work are used, let me show the pictures. They look like scaffolding, yeah, but they don't have the working platform, basically. So, mana the working platform kat sini? And they are used as props. Sometimes people, can, like props, lalunya dia macam single or double. It's it's um, separated. Selalunya untuk macam breaking shores tu, uh, dia panggil props. Dia boleh tahan. Um, so, props ataupun false work, sometimes they are often used interchangeably. They are different members but dia punya fungsi sama. So yang ini kalau you nampak, the false work, they are used to support the structure. In this case, lalunya we use false work to support the upper slab. Kan? Macam mana you nak letak you punya sofit, you tuang concrete pump, pecah jatuh bawah. Tak ada support, tak ada orang tahan daripada bawah. <coughs> so dia perlukan penahan daripada bawah supaya bila you tuang concrete, concrete tu berat, dia ada support di bawah sehingga jadi keras then you can open the props ataupun uh, it's false work. So go back. False work is any temporary structure used to support a permanent structure and to hold the component in place until in construction this is sufficiently advanced to support itself. Any failure of false work may lead to the collapse of the permanent structure. It has happened. They didn't check the scaffold. They didn't calculate the scaffold. They, sorry, not scaffold. I think I put the confused. They use scaffold as false work. And scaffold tu pula scaffold yang dah lama. They thought, okay, tak apalah pakai je scaffold ni. But dia punya connection, dia punya braces were not enough. 
uh, ada pula workers and during that time there was one worker uh, i was i was told by this incident i can't remember who told me i think the safety officer so there were like uh, a worker underneath when they poured the concrete uh, so bila concrete tu pecah uh, saya cakap bila dia tuang concrete tak ada support yang how do i say it? the force work was not strong was not capable to support the load of the concrete bila dia tuang tu so uh, form work yang ada pecah bila pecah ada workers kat bawah tu dia tertanam dengan konkrit basah konkrit tu berat so dia mati kat situ sebab sebab dia tertanam dalam konkrit susah nak keluarkan dia okay so itu masa kes lama lah like very very old case uh, tapi sekarang ni we have more safety at the side uh, tapi bila you pergi practical Sam bila? Two more semesters. Ha, bila pergi praktikal ni janganlah lalu belah bawah. Bila orang tengah tuang konkrit janganlah ngada-ngada diri kat tepi. Diri jauh. Okay. Uh, this could cause injury or death to those working on or near to it as well as loss of time and money. So, on that picture. Ah, uh, So, ini semua adalah false work. Huh? They use props. They use props to support, lepas tu dia ada bracing. So these are all uh, false work. False work. Bawah ni dia ada banyak, dia brace, 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 brace kaki ni. <coughs> Loads on false work. Loads can be either permanent actions, uh, self weight or dead load or variable actions, weight of operative or life load. So loads juga from work atas tu, you just imagine orang diri atas tu, machineries dengan wind load lagi, dengan concrete load lagi. So you have many types of loads to be supported by the force work. So if you don't have or if you don't design a good force work, then you know you will have a disaster. Have something it looks like scaffolding but they are not scaffolding please they are false work okay thank you let me stop the recording first mm.